Hello everyone, another episode in 10,000 series and today I think let's talk about the problems I have with the Tenere or issues which I don't really like and all that, it, it has come to it now. Um, that's a different story, uh, I think it was just a faulty unit and I was unlucky really. So when we are talking about the headlight, the biggest criticism and issue a lot of people have is that the headlight and the dash is really bouncy. And it is. Um, so what I did, and that was a little bit of a coincidence really, I uh, got a gift, um, this is a mascot uh, from my friend and she gave it to me for uh, good luck. And I stuffed that guy between the windshield and the GPS bracket, the dash, and uh, his ass is actually pushing onto the headlight and it creates dampening very well. There is a commercial alternative, there is a company called Camel ADV and they um, had exactly the same problem and what they did is they came up with a bracket and it does exactly the same dampening as my uh, mascot does. Another point I would make, and that's totally personal stuff, is that because the windshield is not adjustable, these bolts are quite firmly um, bolted onto the, the subframe and the subframe is plastic. When I flip the bike, and I will flip the bike as I did with Honda, um, this, is not, this is gonna snap and it's gonna break the frame. Uh, on Honda, this was all metal and uh, when I flipped here, I just bend it back put the screen back and I could ride. Okay, still in the front. The mounting points for the guards on the front forks are really, really, really exposed. I checked yesterday the other side and it's already broken as well, it snapped off. Rally Raid makes these white nylon bolts um, and they're really soft, so they snap very, very easily. Uh, so it's almost impossible to damage the fork unless the fork itself hits the snow. Another point, uh, a lot of people were saying that when uh, riding in muddy conditions and all that, um, the mud guard gets full of mud and stones and will crack it. Now I'm now using the mud guard in the top position and I didn't have that issue. I know that I broke the mud guard on the Honda because it get packed with stuff. Also, it's quite flimsy, to be honest, uh, so I'm not sure how much strength it is. It has. Again, the solution to the mud guard issue would probably be the conversion to the high guard. Okay, two things here. Um, quite famous is the exhaust one. So when you drop the bike, um, as you can see, I have dropped it quite a few times already. Um, the exhaust is being pushed towards the swing arm and then it rubs off the swing arm in here. Actually, it's quite rubbed off uh, on mine. Um, I haven't found any solutions for this yet. Um, you can loosen this bracket and then the exhaust is kind of moving a little bit more. Uh, other solution would be to just change the piping and move the exhaust to the higher position. Um, unfortunately, this is happening to me quite often now. Another thing is, the linkage uh, for the rear suspension is actually the lowest point of the bike and uh, that means that if you are going over obstacles or sliding over things you will hit the rear suspension linkage. Um, now I checked with the DRZ, the DRZ has it exactly the same thing so, and that's a dirt bike so not sure how much of the issue that is or not. Um, solution to that one is uh, get the bash plate which has the coverage uh, for, the, for the rear suspension linkage. Uh, there are many uh, now, uh, I have some in the description. So one thing I would like to do is um, in here I would like to have like two dual position brake lever. I welded a triangle on the Honda uh, so that when I'm standing I can use the triangle and when I'm sitting I can use the brake lever itself. Um, I have adjusted it now for the off-roading so I can use kind of both when I'm standing and sitting uh, but when I'm sitting I, uh, I'm, I'm having the brake lever a little bit higher now than I should have. 
Okay, so that would be probably the main issues, really. Um, a lot of people saying about the suspension that it's not a good suspension. I actually think that for uh, most of overlanding and long distance travel, it is pretty much good enough. The only issue I have with it is that the rear spring is too weak uh, for my weight and weight of my luggage. So I uh, already ordered the replacement spring. There's a Rally Ray, there's Hyper Pro. Um, there's many manufacturers who uh, manufacture the springs. So the important thing is to uh, calculate the rate of the spring correctly and just change the spring. Everything else I think is okay. So that would be the suspension. And then there are little details. So for example, the seat has two parts and um, the bolts in here you have to always unscrew them and screw them back. Uh, now the rally rate already came up with the solutions. One thing which annoys me a little bit is that if I turn off the ABS for the off-road mode, um, it turns itself on uh, automatically. It would be really nice if uh, I have an option to turn off the automatic um, enabling of the ABS again, especially if I'm riding off-road for a long time. Um, at the moment, what I do is I just take the fuse off and that's it. So that would be my list of problems, issues, or things which kind of are a bit annoying me. Um, everything has its solution, um, apart from the exhaust, which is a little bit trickier to solve. So it would be really cool if you uh, know about the solutions to the problems I mentioned, or if you have different problems, um, let me know in the comments. It would be quite cool to kind of get together uh, what uh, ingenious solutions or DIY uh, solutions are there for these problems. Um, so see you next time.